Let's start with the camera controller. Create a script and add it to the player parent game object. Now we need a few variables. We need two floats for our horizontal and vertical sensitivity and a reference to our camera. We also need two floats for our horizontal and vertical mouse input, a float to act as a multiplier, and finally, two floats for our X and Y rotation angles. In the start method, we'll get the camera component from the camera that's the child of our player. We can do this with get component in children and pass in the camera. Next, I'll create a new method for our input and call it an update. Next, we wanna set our mouse X and mouse Y to their respective input axes. Now we can add our horizontal input to our Y rotation. This is because when we rotate on our Y axis, we look horizontally. Here we also want to multiply with our sensitivity and our multiplier variable. As for our X rotation, we want to do the same, but instead of adding, we want to subtract it with our vertical input, since rotating the camera on the X axis will make our player look up and down. We're subtracting because it would be inverted if you add. We also want to clamp our X rotation so our player cannot look too far up or down. I'm gonna clamp it to 90 degrees. That's all for the input method. Back in update we can set our camera and player rotation. For our camera we want to set the local rotation to rotate by our X rotation on the X axis so I'll set it to quaternion.oiler and I'll pass in the X rotation. For our player we will do the same thing the only difference is that we will pass in our Y rotation as we only want our player to rotate on the Y axis. With that let's head over back into Unity and test this out. As you can see, we can look around, but our cursor isn't locked or hidden. We can fix this by going to the start method and setting our cursor lock state to cursor lock mode dot locked and setting cursor dot visible to false. This will lock the cursor to the center of the screen and hide it. Now our cursor is gone. Here's the entire script. You can also access it from GitHub. Link in description. Now it's time to jump. Head over to the player movement script and let's get started. First, we want to create a new bool for checking if we're currently grounded or not. Next, in the update method, we want to set this to a physics raycast. We want our raycast to start at our position. We want it to direct it down, so pass in vector3.down. As for our distance, we want it to be half of our player height, since the raycast is starting at the center of our player. So we can create a new variable for the player height, which is 2, and divide it by 2 to get the half. I'm also going to add a small amount, like 0.1, since sometimes the raycast doesn't always intersect with the ground collider. This way the detection will be consistent. Just to test this out, let's print this to the console. As you can see when the player is on the ground, it says true, and as soon as I fall off, it says false. Now we can remove the print statement. Next, we want to add a force to our player when they press the jump key. So in update, I'll check if we press the jump key, which I'll go ahead and declare now, and I'll set it to spacebar. We also want to check if our player is grounded before jumping, otherwise our player will be able to infinitely jump midair. If both of these conditions are met, then we can jump. And for that, I'll create a new method. In this jump method, we want to add a force to our player. The direction is upward, so I'll type transform.up, and we want to multiply this with a jump force. Let's create this variable, and I'll set it to 5 for now. The force mode we want to use is force mode.impulse, because we want to add a sudden force to our player using its mass. Now let's test this in Unity. As you can see, our player is jumping too low. There are two reasons for this. The first one is that our jump force is too low, and the other is that our drag is too high. So I will increase the force to something like 15. As you can see, we jump high enough, but our player is too slow when coming back down. This is not because our gravity is too low, but because our drag is too high. In the previous video, I mentioned that I would come back to the control drag method and add more to it. Well, now is that time. Basically, while we are not grounded, we want to reduce the drag. So I'll rename the RB drag variable to ground drag, and I'll create a new one for our air drag, and set it to something like 2. Back in the method, we want to check if our player is grounded, in which case we'll set the drag to ground drag. Otherwise, we can set the drag to air drag. As you can see, we land faster, but we move around too fast. To fix this, I'll create a new variable that will act as a movement multiplier when we are not grounded. We will set it to a value that's less than 1 to reduce our movement force midair. In our move player method, we want to add an if statement to check if we are grounded. If we are, we add the force normally. But if we aren't, we want to multiply the move direction with our new air multiplier variable. And now, our movement midair is much better. We are almost done, we just need to fix one small issue. If I go ahead and jump towards a wall for example, you can see that the player gets stuck to it. To fix this, create a new physics material for our player and set both static and dynamic friction to zero. Add this physics material to our player capsule collider. Now we slide down the wall. 